Welcome to this video series on the Health and Safety at Work Etc. Act of 1974. I started these just as a memory jogger for myself so I could remember the key points for my NEBOSH National Diploma exams. And I see there's a lot of people that need the same type of tips and tricks that I needed for myself in order to remember them. So hopefully they'll help you. If you like it, share it, keep watching. Hope you enjoy the videos. So section two is probably the most important bits and pieces that you can remember for the health and safety legislation within the UK, because a lot of your unit A exam stems from this. And you need to get a full understanding as well of exactly what each section means and be able to apply it to the exam questions. So we'll start with 2.1. It shall be the duty of every employer to ensure, so far as is reasonably practicable, the health, safety and welfare of his employees. So that over there is really, really important because it's also putting an absolute duty on the employer, which is denoted by that little word shall over there. Reasonably practicable. You'll obviously know that there is a definition set out in case law, which describes reasonably practicable. We've got a couple of videos up on that as well, so if you want to take a look at them, it'll be helpful to get yourself a definition. Section 2.2. This section here elaborates on 2.1. It gives you further details and provisions that you must ensure you comply with. So I've made a nice little easy trick for myself for A to E in order to remember it. So in my head, I always say, right, so... Section 1 gives you the overall broad view of what you need, your Section 2.1. Section 2.2 gives you deeper understanding. So without prejudice, blah, 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 we get to 2A. So plant and systems of work also, so you need safe plants, safe systems of work. B, arrangements for ensuring so far as reasonably practicable, Safety and absence of risk to health in connection of the use, handling, storage and transport of articles and substances. Also that one self-explanatory. Provision of information, tra instruction, training, supervision as necessary. Again, there's the words reasonably practicable. D, reasonably practicable. Two, the maintenance and condition of entries and exits. So D, we're going to be looking at doors. E, the provision and maintenance of a working environment for his employees, so far as reasonably practicable, safe without risk to health, adequate regards facilities. So you're looking at welfare in E. So what I did for myself was make up a little bit of phrasing over here. So PS, as in you write a letter and PS, there's more to follow. So plant and systems. Then B for backpack. So you're looking at substances, use, handling, storage, and transport. You carry stuff in a backpack. You use the stuff out of that backpack, and you've got to handle the stuff out of that backpack. C, you're looking at communication, information, instruction, and training. D, like I said before, you've got your doors, safe entry, safe exit, including obviously your emergency, emergency exits. And E is your environment. So when you're thinking about environment, you're thinking about your welfare issues, your facilities, and ensuring that your general environment is suitable for the employees. So make sure when you're looking at these acts and regulations and all the legal documents, you're not looking at it in a nutshell of just a single act or a regulation. They're very much intertwined as far as your requirements go. So if you have a look back to your uh, section 2.2b, again, thinking about your backpack, speaking about the carriage and transport of uh, substances, you're, you're already looking at the control of substances hazardous to health regulations. Now we're going into section 2.3, which speaks about your policy. And your policy is intertwined into the management of health and safety at work recs. Regulation 5, your health and safety arrangements, and this over here speaks about effective planning, organization, control, monitoring, review of the preventive and protective measures. And that immediately will catch your attention because that there is the Health and Safety Guidance 65, which is your managing for health and safety um, and your management systems. And then it goes on in the management of health and safety regs 
to say where five or more employees are employed, it has to be recorded in writing. So that policy must be recorded in writing if there are more than five employees. So it's really important to make sure you're not just looking at this in a unit and wrote remembering facts and lines. You have to bring everything together so that you get a full depth of understanding with regards to the requirements regulations. The only way I really remember this is section 2.3. It's kind of that one's just imprinted into my head. And I know the next part of legislation that governs most things is your management of health and safety at work regs. And in order to remember it's, it's regulation 5.1 and 5.2, I think, well, I have five fingers. So if I've got five fingers, I want to keep five fingers. And the only way I'm going to keep them is if I actually plan for that with a policy. So that's kind of a a way I remember it, which is probably not the most academic way, but it works. Section 24 to 2.7 deals with safety assistance, safety representatives, trade unions, consultations, and, and all that good stuff. And it must be tied into the management of health and safety at work regs, which is obviously your regulation seven for your health and safety assistance. And it says every employer shall appoint one or more competent persons to assist him in undertaking the measures he needs to comply with the requirements and prohibitions imposed upon him by or under the relevant statutory provisions. So again, it's just really important to tie the two together and make sure you are looking at everything as an intertwined group rather than the Health and Safety at Work Act on one side and your Management of Health and Safety at Work regs on the other side. You need to be joining them together so that when that question comes up in the exam saying what's required of you when, when is safety assistance required, how does it all work, you've got a clear understanding of which sections of which legislation impose what on who. So that's section two done and covered. That's as easy as it gets, short and sweet and hopefully painless. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have, like, share, comment, Follow us and uh, there'll be more videos coming up soon.